Hi everyone, Trishna here. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to plant your seeds and set your intentions so that they manifest with speed. Now, there are a few different ways that you can set your intentions. You can visualize, you can create vision boards, you can speak affirmations, you can journal or script. So it may take a little while for you to figure out what your manifestation method or style is. <clears throat> As you're trying to figure that out, keep a few things in mind. So you want to make sure that whatever process you use, that it doesn't feel like a chore and that it feels fun. And you want to make sure that you feel excited at the end of it as you complete whatever process and that you don't feel like you're having to make everything perfect or that you're stressed out. <clears throat> now from a personal situation, this may not apply to you. You, have, you really have to figure out what really works for you. But from a personal situation, just as an example, for me, affirmations have always felt like <clears throat> a chore to me. It just feels like I'm repeating these words and I have a really hard time emotionally connecting to these words. And when it comes to setting your intentions, emotions is very, very important. And, you know, emotions are very important to the whole manifestation process just in general. If you saw my second video called the number one rule to manifesting any desire, we talked a little bit about the importance of emotions. The emotions are really important to setting your intentions as well. And I just don't connect personally to speaking affirmations, but there are plenty of people who do so if that's your method then that is your method you just have to work with your own personality your own style your own mental processes pro processes and all of that and then when it comes to visualization i i have always wanted to be able to just visualize whatever it is that i want and just like see it in my mind and just like let it happen in reality <laughs> that has never worked for me i don't think i've ever really visualized anything and it has actually materialized for me. So visualization is just not my process. I enjoy it the first few days, but then after a few days, like I start noticing little things in my visual that I want to change. And then sometimes I try to change it in my visual and it won't change. It'll stay stuck. And then I'll just end up fighting with myself and my energy will get all crisscrossed and I'll just end up feeling stressed. So that is not my process, but it could be your process. Now, in this video, we're really going to focus on journaling or scripting. It's two words for essentially the same thing. And that is really the process that I recommend and I really highly recommend that you follow every step that I do in this process because it really will set the tone and make sure that you hit all the elements that are needed in order to set a very, very powerful intention. Now, if you don't really know your manifestation process already, or if you already know your manifestation process but have not tried journaling, still I really highly recommend that you do journaling and follow all the steps that I lay out in this video. If, because I just really feel like <clears throat> journaling is, is key because when you journal, you have to take a thought in your mind and you have to be so clear on it that you're able to write it down in a cohesive, coherent way. So you really have to take what's in your head and be able to understand it enough to be able to write it in written form in a way that like can be read and can be understood. So that's why I feel like it really adds a lot of clarity to your thoughts and that's really important to man manifesting. You want to have clarity of thought because if you're sending out a scattered vibration, you're going to get scattered results. So you want to have something, you want to be clear on what you're putting out there so that what you receive is clear as well. Because there's always a mirroring effect when it comes to manifestation. What you're putting out is what you're going to be receiving in return. The other thing about scripting that I really like is that it's causing you to take a vision that's in your mind and put it into a very tangible physical form. It's something that is written on a piece of paper that you can refer back to years later, days later, whenever you really want to. It's something that is tangible and it's written and it has a permanence to it. It's there for you later on. You don't ever actually have to go back and read your scripts. I have never really went back and read any of my scripts, but it is there if I want it to be. So it has this tangible form. And I know that setting intentions or visualizing is not the same as a dream or getting an idea. But you know, with dreams, you receive this, this dream and you have it and sometimes you want to remember it. But if you don't write it down, a lot of times it'll just slip your mind and go away. Or whenever you have an idea, if you don't have the chance to write it down, it goes away. And you know, I do know that it's different from visualizing. When you're visualizing, you're creating the image. When you're dreaming, you're receiving it. When you're getting an idea, you're receiving it. So there is a difference. But I do feel like writing it down really adds that permanence or creating a vision board adds that permanence. So I really feel like I really feel like journaling is important. So I highly recommend that you try it and you put in the effort to do it. I just really highly recommend it. It has really worked for me and I really want this to work for you. I really want you to get the results that you really want to get for your life because life can be so fun when 
things just work out the way that you want them to. So yeah. Okay. So, okay. The other thing I want to say is <clears throat> if you really don't want to do journaling or if for whatever reason your life situation does not allow you to journal, you can still use the same, the same process, the same format, the same elements in any other style of manifesting or attracting or setting intentions that you would like. So if really you just are very opposed to journaling, you can still get value from this video and try to use it in whatever other process you prefer. But I highly recommend that you try it, especially if you can. I know some situations you can't, you know, maybe you can't have a journal that feels private to you. Maybe you don't have access to the journal for whatever reason. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you have issues with your arms. Like I understand that you know, different situations call for different techniques. The universe always provides for you the ability to create whatever you want. So if for whatever reason you cannot journal, another process will work for you. Like you, you are not excluded from being able to do this just because your life circumstances are not in the right place to be able to journal. Okay. I want to put that out there. Okay. So I have notes again, because we're going to go through quite a series of examples because the way that I like to journal, when I like to journal, I like to include five elements in my process. Now I'm going to list them out in a specific order. You do not have to do it in this order. Really do what feels called to you in the moment. Remember, emotions are really important to creating, so you want to follow your emotions. When you sit down to journal, you're feeling excited, so you're already, you already have that emotional framework created. You want to ride your emotions in whatever direction that they're going in. Whenever you're doing a healing, you're not really feeling very good. You don't want to go wherever your emotions take you because if you're feeling negative, you're going to, you're going to start having negative thoughts and then the universe, because you're putting out negative thoughts, is going to attract more negative thoughts to you and more negative memories from your past. So you really want to shift that. But when you're feeling excited, it's okay to go with wherever your emotions want to go. You're kind of connected to the universe in a way. And so whatever you're called to is kind of in line with it. And you're, it's all good. It's all good to go with your emotional excitement. So I have five elements that I'm going to present in an order that I like to usually do my scripting and journaling in. But... You don't have to do it in this order. I don't always do it in this order. Just make sure that you have all five elements included every time you journal or script, or at least four of them. So that's the only thing is you don't have to do it in that order, but try to include four to five of these elements that I'm going to mention. So, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go through my five elements. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I think that you know, when it comes to setting your intentions, a lot of people say script or journal, that's what worked for me. A lot of people say that. But I think it can be really hard to know what exactly to write or how to do it the right way. Because if you're not really used to it, or if you're just starting, or if you're out of practice, I think a blank page can be really daunting. So that's why I have these five elements broken down based off of what I have done. And I think that they will really really help you. And like I was saying before, all five elements I think are really important because they kind of touch on everything that's needed to really create that powerful manifestation. They, it hits your intention setting from all angles and gets you really in that emotionally feeling place and adds that energetic momentum. And when you don't have any blocks in your way, like the path is so clear. So when you go towards your desire with momentum and energy behind it, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be powerful. <clears throat> okay, so now Let's get into the process. Enough talking, Trishna. Okay. So, right. So whenever I start to script, like I was saying before, I'm already feeling excited or better, right? We do that. That was what we talked about in the second video. Figure out how you feel. If you feel excited or better, time to do journaling, scripting. If you are feeling less than excited, work on the healings. If you haven't already seen that video, I highly recommend it because I explain it a little bit better than how I just did. So whenever I start my process, I'm already feeling excited. I'm, a, I'm already feeling appreciative because I've decided I'm I, Well, I know I feel excited, so I'm like, it's time to journal. So I'm already feeling really good. And what I want to do is I want to start where I am because I'm already in a good place. I want to start there and I want to emphasize those feelings so that I'm really just adding a boost to my positivity and my vibration and just calling in all of the positive, wonderful things. So what I do is I like to start from a very general, overall, excited, appreciative place. So now is, now is where I'm gonna get into the example. So kind of like with the healing, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna have an idea of what you want to create. 
kind of have an idea of a topic. So here's the example for this video. We're going to say that I'm an artist and I have some pieces in an art gallery that I want to sell at an upcoming show. So that's kind of the topic is I'm an artist and I have some pieces that I want to sell at an upcoming show. So you have a starting place of what you want to create, what you're going to script about, what you're going to journal about. Then I start in with my five elements. The first element is that I like to set a tone of overall appreciation. Like I said, I'm already starting with excitement and appreciation and I like to maximize that. So here's how I might write in my journal when I'm scripting the first part with appreciation. <clears throat> I might say, I am so appreciative that I have this opportunity to showcase my art to the world. I loved selecting my pieces and seeing them on the wall in the gallery. I feel excited about the event ahead. What a wonderful opportunity I have in my life. So this is me appreciating the art show in general, but I would probably, actually I do whenever I do this, I, I talk about everything that I'm excited about and appreciative of. I'll talk about how appreciative of, I am of my partner and what a wonderful time we had the other day and you know just all the amazing things about that person. I'll talk about you know my family and how much they've done for me and how supportive they are and I'll just be appreciative about that. I might talk about my car and how appreciative I am about that and how advanced it is and you know what a great price it was and what quality it is and how sturdy it is and and you know just whatever comes to mind. I just like list out everything that comes to mind that I'm happy about and excited about and appreciative of. Just just write it all out <laughs> as long as it takes. And when I'm when I'm done with that, when I'm just like, yeah, I feel good. I don't really I don't have anything else that's coming to mind. That's when I move down another layer. And I show some excitement that is more specific to the topic that I'm talking about. So I want to I want to create a situation where I'm selling my art pieces at this gallery. So then I would start Okay, I want to input something here. So in this situation, I want to sell my art pieces at this gallery, but mentally you want to keep it open to being able to sell your art at any point in time. You want to allow the universe to be flexible in how it manifests and creates for you, but you can script that you want to sell this gallery and you for sure can sell at the gallery, but just keep in mind that you, you do want to allow the universe creative control because it does see everything at a higher level a higher dimension and it knows the quickest path to your happiness so just something to keep in mind but I would go down a little bit more specifically and I would say something like <clears throat> I had so much fun creating my artwork I love and appreciate the hundreds of colors available for me to create from I loved making each stroke seeing my vision transform into the masterpiece it became before me I am proud of my work as it holds the essence of my soul so then I would write down all the, the appreciation I have around the specific area of my life that I'm trying to create around. So the first part is overall appreciation across the board for my life and everything in it. Then I get a little more specific and I have appreciation and excitement for this area of my life that I want to be scripting about. So I'm getting my energy and juices more specific around this creation that I want to have in my life. Now we move into what is essentially the actual scripting process, which is where you create your, you write your reality as you want it to be. So this is where you make up things that you want to have in your life. So I want to sell my art. So I would make up, make up things or write my reality as I want it to be around selling my art. So now I would say, my art is beautiful and speaks to those who resonate with my story. While we all have our unique journeys, we still have stories that we all relate to. Tales that tie us all together. <clears throat> My art calls to those who love such tales, who love the interconnectedness that we have with one another. My art is well priced for how can you truly put a price on feeling? And I might want to go even further and more specifically. I might say, I can't wait to see all of my art with labels on them indicating to all viewers that my pieces have been sold. I'm so excited to carefully wrap each piece before I give this gift to its new owner. I love the exchange of art and beauty for money. I'm excited to take some of my earnings to celebrate this joyful experience. So you're getting more and more specific about that desire. You're kind of honing in with more and more appreciation to the fact that you want to make a sale. <clears throat> so next, so that was basically 
writing your reality, what isn't present yet, but what you would like to have present. So now, okay, so we've done the full appreciation, got us super excited, brought that appreciation down to specifically around art. Brought that down to writing my reality as I want it to be. I want to sell my art pieces. I want the owners of my art, the, the patrons, to really enjoy what they're receiving and yeah, to really feel the story that I had when I created it. To I want them to relate to that and really connect to that. Now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to... This, this next element is like the belief slash proof element. <clears throat> you basically want to use real life examples. This is kind of like part two of the healing video around self-doubt where you use real life examples, real life experiences, real life observances to basically convince yourself and show yourself that you can have the reality that you want, that you can have the success that you want. So we do that here where we use we create belief by bringing in proof that whatever it is that we just made up can actually happen. So I might write, almost all of my friends have asked me to create custom art for their homes as gifts. Anytime I have given art away as gifts to my friends on my own volition, they have always framed it for all to see. And vid visitors to their homes often ask them who created my work so they can get a piece of their own. And so I know my work is worthy of display for all to see. So you want to make a sale and you're, you have your art now in this first gallery and you're using your past experience of people have always asked you to create art so that they can have it or so they can give it as a gift because they value your work. And whenever you have created your own art and given it as a gift, they've always framed it and put it up. And anytime anybody has ever come to visit your friend's house, they see the artwork and they ask your friend, where, where did you get this piece? Because they want to get a similar piece. So obviously your piece is worth displaying and obviously it's worth buying because people are asking your friends hey where'd you get that it's gorgeous I would like a piece for my for myself so and then your friends are also asking you to make something so they can give it as a gift so <clears throat> use whatever you have to create the element of belief and proof so you have all this positive energy then you script what you want and then you solidify that with proof that this can be so and the final piece is trust and co-creation. So creating trust with the universe or of the universe that you will get what you deserve. You will get, you will get your gifts delivered to you. You will get your, manif your manifestations delivered to you, your intentions manifested for you. So this is all about where if you, as long as you do your part, the universe will do its part. It's co-creation. It's we're working together and you know, I trust that when I do my part, the universe will do its part. So you'll, so then I would write, <clears throat> I love that the universe has called beautiful art through me. I love painting. I love exploring color and form. I love creating what I am inspired to create. I love that the universe is always here supporting me, that it inspires this art for me. If I wasn't meant to be an artist, the universe never would have inspired me to become one. And just as I do my part and create, it does its part and finds patrons to support me. And then you write more reasons to trust. So that's really the flow that I like to use. It's like appreciating all that you have, appreciating this area of your life, writing how you would like your life to be now going forward, proving to yourself why that for sure can be your reality, and then building that trust with the universe that, hey, I've set my intentions, I've done my part, I'm doing my work, and it's up to you now, universe. I know I trust in you. I know that you never would have asked me, built this desire in me, made me want this if it wasn't something that I could have. And so I'm doing my part and I know, I know with my, all my heart that you will be doing yours. So this is, the, this is the whole process that I like to use. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. So now I wanna talk about two things for you to keep in mind while you're doing your scripting process. The first one is you can always change your script later. You are not tied to whatever it is that you write down. So if you write something down and you decide you wanna change it up, that's perfectly fine. Just create a new script <clears throat> when you're ready to change it. If you want a script and you feel like you're ready emotionally, but you're not entirely sure that you know all the details that you want, just write down the details that you do know or write down the version that you think you want. And if you change it later, you can change it later. So don't hold yourself back from writing down 
a script if you are really interested in scripting, if you're really interested in setting your intention. Don't hold yourself back. It's good to take a moment and figure out what your vision is. Like if you really don't know, take some time and figure out whatever, whatever it is that you do want. But if you have a lot of things figured out and you're just worried about a few details, you can always change your script later. Don't hold yourself back <clears throat> just because you don't have everything figured out. The universe will fill in any holes for you. You don't have to have every detail figured out. So write what you know, write what you think you want right now and change it later. And the other thing is, is uh, focus on how you feel as you're writing your script. You know, you may walk in feeling really excited and then as you're scripting, you may notice that you have a few hesitations. Like, you know, you may be writing that you believe your art will sell but, you know, internally you may feel like, yeah, I think it would sell if it was priced lower. So you may have certain little hesitations and you can do one of two things. Like you can either write down those hesitations on a separate piece of paper or like on a separate page just so that you, you have them there so that you can do healing work on it later. Or you can kind of heal with it in your script and be like, you know, I feel like, yeah. Like, you might start off saying, you know, I believe that my artwork will sell, but internally you're like, if it was priced lower, yeah. So then the next sentence you could write something around the price of how, like, you know, I've seen, you know, less talented artists sell their artwork for this price, and how can you really price a feeling? And it's really not about, <clears throat> it's really not about my being a smaller artist, it's really about the connection that the patron has with my work. And that's really where the value is. And so my, you know, my pricing is actually right. So you can actually kind of heal yourself in your script. So do whichever one feels right. If it feels like it's a really strong block, then save it and heal on it separately. If it's something that you feel like you could kind of knock out within your script, then you're already in a really high vibing place. So why, why not try to do that and just kind of deal with it there. And again, you know, you can use a lot of the techniques that we've talked about in the healing as you're healing in your script, which is like using evidence, using information, using data, using facts, using things that you've observed to show yourself that the version of reality that you want is a version of reality that you most certainly can have. So this concludes this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was clear. I'm going to recap the five elements again, just so that you have them here in one place. Start off with appreciating everything at the overall level. Number two is appreciate around the area that you want to be creating in. So if you want to sell artwork, appreciate the art, the process of the art, the process of your creation, appreciate, appreciate the artwork that you've created, appreciate the gallery that's there that can support you, appreciate people who enjoy art, just appreciate things around the realm of whatever it is that you want to create, whatever comes to mind. Then actually do the scripting process of writing your reality as you want it to be. And then part four is the belief and the proof. Look to your past experiences, look to what you observe in the world and prove to yourself that whatever it is that you want to have happen can actually happen for you and easily. And then move on to that trust relationship with the universe and, and understanding that you wouldn't have a desire if it wasn't meant for you to receive that desire and that the universe is co-creating with you at all points in time and as you do your part it will do its part its part so those are the five elements and yeah that basically wraps up this video i hope it was helpful thank you so much for watching don't forget hit, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button and again if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and if there's anybody that you know who could really benefit from this series please don't hesitate to share these videos with them and i will see you in my next video oh let's talk about that <laughs> In my next video, <clears throat> where we're going to talk about detaching from the outcome. So I think I mentioned this in my last video part, which was part three of the healing process. But, you know, as you do the healings, that will already help you detach from the outcome because you are basically making peace with your situation when you're doing a healing. And when you make peace with your situation, you are letting go of needing that outcome to happen. You're able to find happiness even if your scenario didn't change. That automatically detaches you. I feel like with scripting, you just write so much, you hit every single element, that by the time that you're done, you feel complete, you feel good, you feel like it's all out of your system and you can move on and allow the universe to kind of take over from there. But I do know that detaching from the outcome is something that many people struggle with and I certainly have struggled with it myself from time to time. So I have 
like 10 or 12 different tips on how to detach from the outcome. So I'm going to try to make each one, I think, a separate video. So we'll have about 10 more videos in this whole manifestation series that will be focused on detaching from the outcome. And that is what is to come. So thank you so much for watching. Now the video is really over. I will see you in my next video.